you know, a farmer is a agronomist, a meteorologist. Jace Miller grew up riding a tractor, working the land in a desert. Plenty of sun in southern Arizona, but what he craves most is water. This water deal is it's getting pretty troublesome because every day we lose farmland to urbanization or we lose farmland due to lack of water. Drought is gripping the American Southwest and his family's farm business spanning five generations is suffering. So all this land is not going to be planted or? Correct, correct. This year, of his share of irrigated Colorado river water was cut off as of January 1st, forcing some painful decisions. To the left and right of us here are some fallowed fields. These fields were in production up until about two years ago. The ditches, which brought in the river water, are clogged with tumbleweed. The land is parched and weedy. Nothing will grow here in this field this year without the river water. I get the sense from you that this place makes you feel sad. It does. It's kind of it's kind of dismal to be here. I remember as a kid hearing the old joke that whiskey was for drinking and water was for fighting and now the last few years it really hits home and it's not quite as funny as it once was. So the Colorado River, which brings water to seven states and 40 million people, is shrinking. America's largest reservoir, Lake Mead, fed by the Colorado, has dropped to historic lows. Those whitish lines mark where it used to be just 20 years ago. Climate change, say scientists, is deepening the drought and forcing urgent negotiations on who will get how much water. There's no denying the crisis, says Catherine Sorensen, a water expert in Phoenix. We can't continue to live on the razor's edge where there's a threat of getting to drastically low levels in Lakes Powell and Mead um, and, and still maintain the kind of economy and quality of life that we have come to enjoy here. A wet winter this year has sparked desert green and hope that this summer won't be so dry. It's great that we've had good snowpack this year. You know, we'll take it. But fundamentally, if we don't solve the problem of an over allocated river system, then it's just a, a math game and, and we'll lose. It's the Hoover Dam, an engineering marvel which meters out water stored in Lake Mead and sends it down the Colorado River. In Arizona, a huge canal system ferries the water into drier land. The Central Arizona Project is a series of canals over 400 kilometers long that was built to bring water from the Colorado River here to this valley and pump it in to irrigate the desert. But cut off from river water, Jace Miller will have to depend more on groundwater to irrigate and that's also restricted. We're harvesting anywhere from seven to nine times per year. Um, that's incredible. Isn't it? It's, it really is. The, and that's due to 340 days of sunshine, um, superb soil conditions, and when things are right with the stars when we have water. Prices for alfalfa are running high this year, but it's a water-hungry crop. If our climate is changing, right. as people suggest, yes. and if this is getting hotter and drier in an already desert condition, Correct. they say maybe it's time for you to reconsider what you're doing. The climate's ever-changing. We deal with that every day in farming. We need to, to look at the water resources we currently have, and we need to be better with them. And Arizona, as a farming and ranching state, has been at the forefront of water conservation for the last 30 to 40 years. But the Southwest now has to divvy up even less water, with access governed by a complicated system of rights negotiated decades ago. Arizona, for example, is a junior rights holder with fewer rights than across the river in California, causing some tensions now. I think that they understood their junior priority status. They're just not happy with it now. And we called up Tina Shields with the Water Authority in Imperial County, California. I think that we have to look at what the reality is and not pen our hopes that things will improve or that there's going to be some you know, magic um, solution by kicking the can. There is no magic in the vanishing water. And it's a hot button topic around here. Alrighty. Man, I tell you, between work and the baby and fighting this weather, 
Oh, it's I been a hell of a... It's been a wreck, hasn't it? Yeah. Lou Childs needs hay for his horses, and the reservoir he relied on went dry last year. So what'd you do? Without. I had to come over and buy hay from Jace. Couldn't raise my own. What do you think's causing the drought? <laughs> I don't know. I... Somebody's messing with the weather. Somebody's messing with the weather. <laughs> yeah. who's, who's messing with the weather? Yeah, you tell me. <laughs> what do you think about people who say it's it's climate change that we've we've just used too much water? Nah. That's I that isn't my feelings. We've had droughts in the past, and then we get a, a wet session. You know, it it comes and goes. It's cyclical. But few predict the water will come roaring back, so the southwest is already adapting. Two kilometers from Jace's place, farmers have sold or leased land to solar companies, choosing sun guarantees over water worries. Come here! Jace isn't ready to give up yet. He hopes the next generation of millers, like son Carson, will join the family farm business. People tell me that this is a dying lifestyle and there's no way to make a living. But at the same time, it's what I'm going to do till I die. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, Penal County, Arizona.